That's recording. Yeah. Okay, that's recording. The video's recording. I feel like right now I should say like prestige worldwide. <laughs> worldwide, worldwide, worldwide. So much better now. I'm putting my phone on. Um, all right, so getting into it. Episode two, CrossFit Free Podcast. Part two, because the first one we butchered or just rushed it. So, all right, so today we're going to chat about post class accessory work slash be complete, which sometimes gets copied over or not, but basically post class work. How it's, uh, what, what's been done prior and where it's going to go forward. I guess what we're going to make changes to, how are they going to see it on the blog? what it's going to mean to them, how it's going to correlate over to the function phase, which we went over on the last podcast, uh, versus the fitness performance, and then also the separation between the post-class work from assistance standpoint, and then like running aerobic work and gymnastics work. Yeah. What's so funny? I- I'm getting like, <laughs> like getting claustrophobic. <laughs> close no it's the headphone i'm just like i'm trying to i'm like really those who are watching the youtube thing you'll see that we put on um headphones now apparently that's the pot the thing to do when you're podcasting so you can hear yourself it's fairly awkward but i can see the role it'll play all right so getting into it not to we, we did this the first time but be complete post class right now we have tons of members that uh, stay after for you know, an hour or two, right? And they, at least they plug and play. Uh, we we obviously have our post class. We have be complete on there, but for them, they they do that, and then a lot of their own stuff or templates, whatever it Following, may be. Yeah. So we're gonna try to close that in. I think they're excited, at least from those folks that I spoke to. They're excited for the function phase to incorporate some pieces of that if they do fitness and performance, and then. Also, I've brought up a little bit about, okay, we're going to make some changes to the be complete to the post-class stuff, and they're excited about that. So prior, at least from how I'm drawing out the, the post-class now, they are somewhat lining up with the day, but then also taking into consideration the next day. Yeah. So they're not doing anything that's just overwhelming. You know, they're not going to do tons of bicep curls and pulling if the next day they're going to have a bunch of upper body pulling. That's not beneficial by no means. So, but the thing is, they don't have that piece. They don't know what's coming the next day. So going forward, not to say they're still going to have the next day, but they should know that the B complete phase is going to, just like the week progresses, the the post class for the gym is going to progress. So yes, they can miss a day. You know, obviously they should do as much as they can, but they're not going to want completely pile on new work if they are trying to line up their days and i think that's pretty understand i think they're going to understand that because it's they're doing it now you know we have so many folks that ask us now like oh we're squatting tomorrow or we're doing this and it's because they're adding stuff on we're hoping to encompass that put it all together so that they don't have to ask that question right they should understand it's not to say they can't do other things as well they should you know constantly be working on things and weaknesses and so forth but this will hopefully be a better lineup for them. That makes sense? That's kind of where yeah. you're going, right? Um, why don't you chat a little bit about the the Masters? So you do the CAP Masters. I mean, the reasoning for that program for Masters over something like the CAP programming that's online is in fact for the pre, the warm-up, a dialed-in warm-up, a structured warm-up, mobility, activation, so forth. And then the, the be complete phase, right? That's a huge part of that Masters program. And I think for our members that have checked that out or have chatted with you about it, they see that. So why don't you chat a little bit about week to week, how you lay out the days, you know, and just brief kind of what goes into your be complete relative to your day and how you're doing it. Because I think it's going to tie into what, how I'm going to do it with the gym, kind of relating to the cap stuff. Yeah. Well, you started off, you know, on the right page, basically saying, laying it out in a sense of what we, you've done that day and then also what you have going on the next day. 
so things aren't overlapping. Uh, and that's how I'm also going about it with the masters, but it's a little bit more uh, single domain movements, you know, single arm presses, single arm rows, single leg step ups, lateral squats, and so forth. But also going based on what I did that day, I'm trying to think of, you know, basically what, what holds everything together. It's the glue, the glue between the woods. Like, you see, you can see the foundations, everything else on the outside of the house, but you don't see the crevices inside, you know, what's holding everything together. And that's what I'm trying to base it off of. That was a phenomenal analogy. Really? Yeah. It nice. Made me feel like I should get a tool belt. <laughs> so I, I do want to structure in that sense of, you know, assistance work, stuff that is helping or being proactive of what you've already done to continue building off it, but also not having enough strain where it is going to affect you the next yeah. day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that, yeah, that's funny that you said that because I was just, uh, I was chatting with someone the other day on, on exactly that. Like, you know, a lot of folks, they want to add, it's the worst when you get people who, just for instance, maybe their, their pull-ups are good. They have a ton of strict pull-ups. They have this, they have that. They're like, I want a butterfly. Okay, cool. And then every single day you see them butterfly pull-up. You know, every single day they're on the rig. And while... While the mentality is phenomenal, you know, that like that go get them attitude where they will put the time in, we also understand how detrimental that is. And that was just, a, that's just an example. It would be the same, it would be the same if someone's like, hey, I have a weak deadlift. And you're like, cool, let's just, let's just deadlift, you know, five days this week. Um, you know, we'll go six days now. It's just not going to work. Yeah. You know, you're arguably going to take a step back. But tying that together, that's probably the hardest thing, at least for me even in individual programming and working with folks outside the gym, working with you guys over the years, it's like you, it's so easy to just say, yeah, just go do it every day. You know, you're, you can't handstand walk, cool. You should have some sort of variation almost every day. Shouldn't be handstand walking every day probably, but you should have a variation. You have to have something you're building on. And a lot of this stuff lines up like that. And a lot of it would be just detrimental. It'd be, it'd like be taking steps back. Yeah. So Tying in the post class, that's probably one thing it won't cover specifically. If someone's like, I need to get my first pull up, well, post class every day, while it will probably help you, is not going to be an exact layout to get your first pull up. But we do have stuff for that. You know, we put up the pull up program. I don't know when that was, a month or two ago? Yeah, a couple months and ago. And there was a ton of people added to it, obviously. And I think. You guys would know more so because you're coaching classes, but I believe a ton of people continued to do it. We're progressing it out. Then the opens came. That's, that's it's tough there. They're trying not to add, you know, three days a week of upper body pulling specific just to getting a pull up. But honestly, even the ones that did, I, I saw numerous people get their first chest to bar last week. Yeah. Or this week, right? Was it? This, this week. Yeah. Um, not to say that's because of the program, but a lot of folks are doing it. So they should understand that following post-class is not a direct goal. It's just an overall vision of staying healthy, health longevity, assisting with you know, what you're doing in class. Because honestly, there'll be things in class, there'll be moments in class, there'll be times where people push a little too hard or maybe get off in positions. Having the structure that you spoke of, which, which can come from post-class or at least assist with it, makes that risk reward level much more balanced, right? Like if someone's foundationally sound, they, you know, balanced, you know, we talk about imbalances on function. If they're not imbalanced, then the risk of them getting injured is much lower. Whereas folks who are completely off, you know, off sync, very, you know, one side dimensional, whatever it is, that's, that's not going to help anything. So the the post class is going to be very well rounded and focused in a sense of keeping people, you know, healthy or assisting in staying healthy, not specific to, hey, I want my first muscle up. Yeah. And I wanted to touch on that because that's just obviously before we go over these podcasts and, you know, obviously we're still new to it, but I chit chat with folks here like, hey, you know, this be a good subject. And it, I chatted about this one a little bit and it's like, yeah, no, I'm pumped. I really want to get my first muscle up. I'm like, you just missed the last, we just chatted for three minutes and you ignored everything I said apparently, but it's not, that's not the point. It's, it's not to say you're going to do the post class and it's going to get you the exact goal you want. Don't get me wrong. It may line up at times, but that's not the point. 
a lot of it will assist, you know, it's, it's kind of going on the same lines of, of push and pull, right? We know that CrossFit is heavy in the pushing department and not as heavy as it should be in the pulling. I think we do a good job of balancing it compared to a ton, but it's not where it should be. So if the rule of thumb is three to one for every press or, you know, push you do, you want to do three pulls as far as balance goes, which is a super broad number. I don't know who came up with the three to one thing, but I'm sure there's some sort of science on it. We, that's where post-class would come in. So if you're doing a ton of push-ups, tons of ring dips, even tons of burpees, things like that, that post-class is going to try to compensate for that right there and then. Mm -hmm. So if we're doing a ton of bench press, we always try to superset it with scap squeezes, right? Just some sort of balance. The post-class for the day will line up with that. That's, I guess, a better structure, which is also why when they folks say, well, if I miss, you know, if I miss the post-class Monday, should I be doing that? No. Don't jump around. Just stick to it. Now, if you have more time, then absolutely. You could you could plug away a plug little in, bit. You could look on Monday and Tuesday. Say it was a Wednesday. You'd look at Monday and Tuesday and say, you know, I'm going to do a few things from that. Probably not going to be detrimental. Also, the volume of post-class is not meant to be sitting here for 90 minutes, right? Yeah. It's, it's just a little bit extra, uh, which I think is why it's more doable for people, why, we, why we're hoping that more and more jump on it because we're not expecting you to be here for another hour. For those who are and can, great. We're, you know, it's up to them. That's their decision. But, but yeah, I wanted to be very clear on that part only because I know it's a question in the gym for coaches. And I know just from all this function talk that we've been going over. And once we put that last podcast out, it's like the question started coming in like crazy, which I think is great. Yeah. And I was actually shocked. I meant, to, I meant to chat with you about this, but I figured we would hear. But the amount of people that, and I, I hate to say that I assumed, but I did. I had specific people in mind when I'm like, oh, here we go. You know, thinking this person is going to view this as a negative and, oh, I, you know, I want to do performance. I'm not doing function. And to be honest, a lot of folks that I thought would kind of push back there, I, I, it's been the opposite. It's like, I can't wait to do that. Everything gonna, I heard is great. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be great for me. Um, but hey, can I do this? You know, can I jump in performance? I'm like, absolutely. You know, that, that's not the point. And I think that's a, a, a huge, huge, <laughs> as far as our coaches, myself, mostly myself, uh, but our coaches as well, learning curve, you know, as far as like realizing that you don't have to be stuck in one, you know, for so long, we're like, you've got to do fitness or performance. There's no, that's it. One or the other. And we thought that was the best. And, and honestly, I think it, it I thought did. you were going somewhere else with that. I thought you were going to talk about your fitness and how you can be going to function once in a while. I don't know. To help yourself that's, out. We need a lot more longer than 25 minutes to discuss that. I should be uh, pre-function. Do they have that? Nito actually, oh, I got we got to get him. He had a hilarious thing the other day. He's, He's like, yeah, it's pre-function, function, post-function. Post That's what he's assuming I need to be in. Oh, <laughs> Nito, I'm coming for you. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, that's, that was a bit, it was actually eye-opening to me. I'm like, wow, that's honestly great. I think we've, the culture here has evolved. It's matured. I've matured even as a coach. And I've been fortunate enough to work with all you guys in so many gyms outside of here where thinking my one way was right. Yeah, I'm sure it got me certain places in, in understanding programming and understanding layouts, but I'm excited where function, where our phases are going to go, where we don't hold people or we don't stick them in a corner saying, hey, you have to do this. Don't get me wrong. I still think there needs to be some sort of organization and a governing body or whatever it may be that says, hey, you, you need to stick to this, this line. You're jumping all over. It's not beneficial. But understanding that certain pieces of function that day may be very beneficial to this particular member while also jumping in fitness or performance for maybe the workout is, I think it could be a great thing. The complete phase is going to line up with all of them. So let's just say function, for instance, being it is more unilateral work, single, you know, when we say single, I think of single leg squats, single arm pressing, things that are not allowing one imbalance to pick up for the other side. Um, let, let's just say that day particularly, that function phase isn't going to have a duplicate movement, the post-class. That was one question that I got from a few folks, and it was a great question, meaning that if I do post-class, should I just never do function? Because we did mention on the podcast that function would be, you know, for folks that couldn't stay after, but it wasn't one or the other. 
that's not where I was going yeah. with that. It, it will differ. And for that reason, exactly, because many people will benefit from function that will also benefit from post-class. So they will not be redundant. Because like you said before, everything is going to line up. It is. Yeah, yeah. 100%. And, that, and honestly, that's, it's theory, right? Like, yeah. I love the idea of this. I mean, one, one, it's me pushing it on the back end, but I, you know, I'd be lying if I said it, I had it all figured out. I don't. So I've put a ton of time and many hours per night st- looking to how I could line up three phases and not, you know, honestly, three phases like this, you could make it where it's completely different phases. And that's probably the best case scenario, but our, we couldn't run a class. You know what I mean? Nothing yeah. would line up. So we're going to try to intertwine three phases in the same hour, in the same time domains per f- section of the phase. Strength is going to be a lot of time. You know, conditioning will be in a lot of time. Post-class is obviously irrelevant. It's post-class. But yeah, I would, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't an obstacle. I just think it's very doable. And I think once it's dialed in, I'm hoping there's not some growing pains in the beginning, but if there is, we'll work with them. But I believe once it's dialed in, once all the coaches are on the same page as far as how the class is going to progress, how to bring function and performance, let's just say, because that's the, the biggest difference. Uh, fitness will fall somewhere in between. How to keep them together, the energy of the room to stay together. I think it'll be, it'll be a phenomenal blend. Post-class, since that's what they're talking about, uh, we're getting off subject there, but I think the more that lines up with the function, fitness, and performance, the better job we do at displaying it, the more members we're going to see. And I, and I think we have a great, trust me, I, I've been to a lot of gyms. I program for a lot of gyms now. I believe we've done a phenomenal job of getting folks to understand the benefit of post-class work. I'm not, I'm not taking away the fact that many just can't do it. You know, they got families, kids, um, responsibilities that they, they, they got one hour. That's what they give us. That's all we, that's it. You know, we need to do the best with that hour that we can. That's where I love the function. But for the folks who do have the extra 10 minutes, the extra 20 minutes, pre or post, this is going to be great. I think it's going to roll out. Yeah, well. I agree. So um, keeping on track. So, well, for the know, most part, we've gone over a lot of, you know, the what and the when, but I, I don't think we've attacked so much of the how, you know, and, yeah. and you went and we go back to structure and it being laid out at, you know, being structured. And you had a great example, you know, going back into the podcast, basically bench press. And then being it, having it followed by some bent over reverse flies. There's a reason behind that. So you should be attacking those bent over reverse flies the same way you're attacking the bench press during class. Yeah, I think, you know, this won't make a ton of sense because obviously our second recording this, but after listening to the prior one, I think that the one thing you mentioned, you'll get into this in a second, but it's not when, when we say attack and going forward, it's not an intensity thing. You're not racing through post-class. Yeah. But it is a focus thing to me. Um, a few folks, this has been going viral, so it's, it's by no means my saying, and I'm not going to attach my name to it and quote it, but there's been a big thing going around of everything you do with purpose, for a purpose. Uh, Justin, so I forget his, how do you pronounce his last name, but he's got a phenomenal podcast, and he, uh, he's huge on that. Like Everything you do in your life is done with purpose, for a purpose. Um, and th- that could that entire statement couldn't line up with anything better, in my opinion, than post class. Because in a workout, intensity in, for most cases, not for everyone, not for all members, but it trumps a lot of what we do. You know, they if they're moving correctly and they're not, you know they're not out of control. We're like, hey, we want the intensity up. And this isn't referencing like new folks. This is saying, hey, you've been doing this for a while. We want to see how high you can get the intensity and how long you can keep it there. Because that's huge, right? It's map yeah. training at its finest. But, but the post class, yeah, it's not, it's not a race, right? It's never for time. There might be some stuff that's, but it's not. It's, it'd be few and far between. It'd mostly be add on work or co work. But in general, it's just focus. Like you need to yeah. be focused in what you're doing. It, it, we chatted about it a little bit the first time when we said like bodybuilding, like the old school way of like watching your muscles grow. It's absurd in a sense, but it, it made a, it, it works. And the science behind it is there. It's just the way it's delivered yeah, sometimes. If you're not doing it, just do it. There's some, there should be an intent to yep. it. I mean, you could see it, I guess crossover symmetry or a lot of scap work is probably the most prominent thing to me 
where when we see people do it, I'm like, I can see you having a full conversation while you're using the bands. There's no way you're targeting, you're not focused on anything right now. They're just literally going through the motions with the shoulders and they're probably not getting anything out of it, right? So yeah. I think that gonna, it's gonna come down to as the post class is laid out and delivered, the coaches being very aware of what's going on. You, you know, again, the reason it's post class is it's not in class. So if a coach needs to run the class, it's not their job to run over to side two. But they, they're watching, they're aware of things. It's something that we'll need to bring up with folks. But for those who do listen to this, for those who do jump on the, the, the post-class work, focus on what you're doing trumps what you're doing in some cases. You know, the, oh, I didn't do 50 exercises today. Cool, did you do two that you were focused on, that you actually felt that you did properly? You know, a lot of things that we, we do post-class are structural-based. Or, or essentially trying to correct imbalances. Well, if you're not focused and actually doing them properly, you're probably not correcting the imbalance. So you said it many times, but understanding the, why you're actually doing it and making sure you are not from an intensity standpoint, but from a focus standpoint, yeah. following through with the movement. And they, this is, you know, to build on that, and we're not going to touch on this, but the videos we have coming out, this will be huge. You know, we're going to have videos coming out on, it'll be on the CrossFit free website, but it'll be on YouTube, instructional based videos. We've already talked about this. We've obviously pushed it off a little bit, but it's coming. And that a big part of those instructional videos will be so that when we're, you know, you do it for the cat masters, I do it for gyms where we're, we're sending all this stuff over these, you know, they have no idea what these exercises are. We're grabbing YouTube videos, right? We're searching yeah, for them. Searching we're going to make them, right? So we'll have our own library very soon of a lot of these instructional, a lot of these movements, a lot of these post-class exercises. We're going to have our own directory to drive people to. That hopefully will help with a ton, right? Because now it's, hey, we don't know how to do this. It's like, hey, just click the YouTube link right next to it. And yeah. Watch it. Uh, so I think that's going to be awesome to couple in with this. Um, and following those videos too, we'll, we'll have an explanation of the intent of the movement as yeah, well. Yeah, while you're doing it, yeah. You know? Which I know I, I've, it's probably the scap work that gets questioned the most, I think. Uh, at least to me, if I'm walking around down there, it's, hey, what, you know, what is this? What is it doing? You know, it's, so breaking down the scap work, the different variations of scap work, you know, even crossover symmetry, obviously there's a little sign there that pops up, but when we do it with change plates, when we do it like old PT, eyes wise T's, when you do that stuff, if they don't understand it, they're probably not getting the most out of it. And I would argue in some cases, you can actually be doing more harm than good. You know, who knows, depending on what this person, how, how really unfocused they are, how they're going through the motions, it could be more detrimental than anything. So adding to yeah, this. Yeah, so a lot of the scap work, other things need to be active for, for you to, yeah, yeah. to do it. Well, I mean, it's kind of, it's what we worked on with you for years, but let's be honest, like the gym, if you look at a whole, hey, kick up to a handstand, 98% of the gym just holds himself on the wall. You know, they're not truly understanding activation. They're not really understanding the point of a handstand on the wall mm. and how it carries over to the barbell. Or maybe they understand it, it's not correlating it, right? So it's like, well, my handstand's my handstand. The split jerk is totally different. Whereas to me, they are one and the same. If you have a great handstand hold, you will have a phenomenal split jerk. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that, and I, we've proven it. We've had folk, many athletes here that you could, you contributed one to the other, right? You just watch them, you're like, that split jerk. Look at Caesar, poor Caesar, if he ever listens to this, but you know, probably the fastest lockout, right? And just his ability to have active shoulders, one, his mobility's there, that's the biggest thing. Some people can understand active shoulders, they can understand, <coughs> excuse me, how to tie it together, they physically can't do it, right? They can't get there. So a lot of that is muscle memory and muscle coordination. A lot of it's also yeah, just like time, you inability know? to perform it. So that's, you know, I really feel like those videos will be an enormous help to when we're saying, hey, guys, this is why we're doing it. Every time I jump into coach a class, and it's rare, if I'm doing handstand holds, I could pretty much right across the board, right? Like middle fingers aren't facing forward, hands too wide. They're not active. Right? There's, it's, it's pretty common, but it's also a huge problem when we go over to like the split jerk and we're saying, guys, this is not, this is not the position we're, we're striving for. 
it's because we're, you know a lot of times it's not addressed on the most functional form, which is really just the handstand or you know some of the, to the honestly floor. some of the movements aren't the most appealing things. Like yeah, yeah, you know handstand hold that's not as sexy as a split jerk or as fun. Agreed, yeah, yeah. You know so, but it's probably the most beneficial. Yeah, exactly. I mean Tabata handstand hold, silly, but literally you want to be phenomenal at understanding holds and lockouts. Like go perform it and do it for eight. Yeah, for if 16. you want to do all this other things like. There's there's going to be ways, there's going to be steps yep. for you to get there. This is where I think, we got a few more minutes, but breaking it down, and this is what I, I'm, I'm actually plugging together. I've almost finished it where it's a gymnastics template because I know some, some of the competitors are going to be on this post year. Um, I want to be able to break that down even further to like static holds, isometric holds, negative tempo type stuff, which is again, the furthest thing from the sexy movements, right? It's, it's honestly boring and tedious, but it will single-handedly get people their first handstand push-up. It will, it will fix so many things if they could just buy into it and believe yeah. in it. And it, honestly, yeah, it's time-consuming. I've always said it. Not, nothing about, you know, for you, you couldn't front rack a barbell for how long? You know, to, to be able to, to perform that and achieve, it's, it's not fun. I mean, no. It's boring as hell. And it's, but... If you don't do it, you'll never have fun doing the movements you want to do. You'll just get frustrated. So this is the same thing for folks. And we have a lot of members here that could very easily do a muscle-up. They have the strict pull-ups. They have the foundational strength. They have, you know, the tissue is developed around the joints of which we know that could go wrong, per se, if you, you know, you're pushing these higher-level gymnastics movements. They have it all. They don't have transitions. They don't understand movement. And coordination to be honest with you to put the two and two together the body can't push and pull at the exact same time in theory it also has angles you know anyone who's done like martial arts like jujitsu was a big part of that it's like if they're fighting it one way you pull the other it's it's just the way it works well a muscle up is we i just chatted to celia baldina where you're pulling up and you need to transition into the press part of the dip like that, right? Immediately. You, you can't think about it. We, we, the reason we were chatting about it is because we were discussing ring muscle-ups versus bar. I'm like, well, you have a static structure, a piece of steel that stops you from sinking any further. So you have a split moment in time where you're actually just pull, catch, press. Yep. Whereas the rings, you don't have that, right? If you pull, think, you start sinking deep, deep, deep. Maybe you don't get through the rings. There's... You, you get way more feedback from that, right? In, in instantaneous too. So just an example of, you know, where we're going to have to try to tie that in together and explain it, but also have folks willing to do all this post-class stuff. And again, we're, this is kind of going even too deep into the post-class. We're not going to put that out there. You know, we're not going to have post-class one day be like, just like static holds the whole day. But this is where it'll be noted there for the future. Hey, Tabata Hanson holds breaking that down further belly to the wall just laying on the floor pressing against the wall remember we did that yeah i've done that with a few of the classes randomly people are like i have no idea what this is i'm like this you should be doing this this is phenomenal um and we learned that back in the day from like the gymnast route like th they do it you know that's a very basic progression for the movement we start with the the handstand hold sometimes you know the wall walk it's like it goes way you know you can drop that down a lot as far as level is concerned it's just understanding it all putting it together and i think putting the videos out there, even for us, big refresher, you know, it'll get all the coaches much more refreshed to some of the real basics and folks can always go back to basics. Yeah. It's, I don't care it's also going to help everyone grow. Yeah. All of us. That's really all I got. You got anything else? No. How'd, uh, how'd 18.5 go? That now? Yeah. Not four. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm honestly, my legs are still hurting me. Really? Yeah, yeah. everyone said the same thing. There's like days, which is crazy because we talked about this. There's not a ton of thrusters relative to even the people yeah. who only got, you know, 12, 15, not, whatever it was, doesn't matter. Much less thrusters than normal volume of training in some cases for those folks, and they are, legs are fried. But it can probably be attributed to the fact that the intensity, right, the whole time is like. Well, you're basically just turning off and on, yeah. off and on, yeah. the legs the entire time. Yeah. yeah. So even those smaller sets, but by hitting those smaller sets and taking a quick rest and going back on it, yeah. it's basically like doing Tabata air squat. It's true. How, how awful is that? Yeah. You, you're doing air squat. No, that's not my forte. And I promise you the next day you're not going to walk. 
Yeah, I don't even get a big number and I can't walk. Yeah. Those things kill me. I don't know what it is. All right, cool. Uh, next one, uh, next podcast next week, we'll post this. This will be on YouTube, video standpoint in the audio, and on iTunes for the audio, and on Podbean, which I don't know. Some folks are asking about non, I don't know who doesn't have an iPhone anymore, but it's awesome, folks. Mark Pru, get an iPhone. I'm so sick of that green message. So yeah, uh, all three channels, and that's it. Cool. Yeah. All right.